In this lesson, we continue our exploration of paracyclic reactions, covering the fundamentals of cycloadditions and an in-depth look at the Diels-Alder reaction. Cycloadditions are probably the most important paracyclic reactions and are used extensively throughout organic synthesis. A paracyclic cycloaddition is the combination of two separate pi systems to form a ring. A bracketed notation is used to describe the cycloaddition based on the number of electrons involved. The numbers of electrons contributed by each pi system are listed in descending order, separated by a plus symbol. In the first example, we see a cycloaddition between two molecules of ethene to form cyclobutane. Each pi system contributes two electrons to the reaction mechanism, and is therefore considered a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. In the second example, we see a cycloaddition between ethene and 1,3-butadiene to form cyclohexene. The butadiene contributes 4 electrons to the mechanism, and the ethene contributes 2, so the reaction is considered a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. Cycloadditions occur via the interaction of the HOMO from one pi system and the LUMO from the other pi system. Under thermal conditions, both pi systems are in the ground state. Perhaps surprisingly, under photochemical conditions, only one pi system will be in an excited state, the other will remain in the ground state. Molecules in an excited state are unstable and thus form in very low concentration. The frequency of interaction between two excited state molecules is therefore extremely low. During a reaction, it's far more likely that a molecule in an excited state will encounter one of the many molecules that are in the ground state. In a cycloaddition, the ends of the HOMO from one pi system form new sigma bonds to the ends of the LUMO from the other pi system. The ends must overlap in phase in order to form bonding interactions, which is considered a symmetry allowed process. The in phase overlap at both ends of each pi system can occur with one of two possible topologies suprafacial and anterofacial. A suprafacial addition is a sin like process in which the two bonds form on the same face of the pi system. Here we see the two possible forms of suprafacial addition. The first diagram shows the reaction of two symmetric molecular orbitals. The upper molecular orbital is added to the top lobe on the right end and the top lobe on the left end of the lower molecular orbital. Because both ends are adding to the same top face, the reaction is suprafacial. The second diagram shows the reaction of two asymmetric molecular orbitals. Again, the upper molecular orbital is added to the top lobe on the left end and the top lobe on the right end of the lower molecular orbital. Because both ends are adding to the same top face, the reaction is again suprafacial. In contrast, an anterofacial addition is an anti-like process in which the two bonds form on opposite faces of the pi system. Here we see a diagram depicting an anterofacial addition between symmetric and asymmetric molecular orbitals. The upper molecular orbital is added to the top lobe on the left end, but on the bottom lobe of the right end of the lower molecular orbital. Because the two ends are adding to the opposing top and bottom faces, the reaction is anterofacial. While suprafacial addition is possible for the formation of any ring size, anterofacial addition is restricted to the formation of relatively large rings, typically eight atoms or larger. For an anterofacial addition, the ring needs to be large to enable the flexibility needed to wrap one pi system onto the opposite faces of the other pi system. Let's take a look at two examples that demonstrate the analysis of cycloadditions at the orbital level. In the first example, we see 1,3-butadiene reacting with ethene to give cyclohexene under thermal conditions. The diene has 4 pi electrons and 4 pi molecular orbitals, and the ethene has 2 pi electrons and 2 pi molecular orbitals. Under thermal conditions, both molecules are in the ground state. In the diene, both psi1 and psi2 are filled, and in ethene, only psi1 is filled. Remember that the reaction will occur between the HOMO of one pi system and the LUMO of the other. In the diene, psi2 is the HOMO, and in the ethene, psi2 is the LUMO. Psi2 is an even-numbered pi molecular orbital, which means it's asymmetric. Here we see the simplified molecular orbital depictions of the two asymmetric molecular orbitals, the HOMO of the diene and the LUMO of the alkene. As you can see, the combination of two asymmetric orbitals results in a suprafacial topology. This is easily achieved in the formation of a six-atom ring, so the reaction succeeds. In the second example, we again see 1,3-butadiene reacting with ethene, but now under photochemical conditions. Under photochemical conditions, one molecule will be in its most stable excited state. In this case, an electron in the diene has been excited from psi2 to psi3. 
the Athene remains in the ground state. In the diene, psi 3 is now the homo, and being an odd-numbered pi molecular orbital, psi 3 is symmetric. In the ethene, psi 2 is once again the lumo, and being an even-numbered pi molecular orbital is once again asymmetric. As you can see, the combination of a symmetric orbital with an asymmetric orbital requires an anterofacial topology. However, a six-atom ring is too constrained to accommodate an anterofacial topology. There simply aren't enough atoms in the ring to provide the flexibility that would allow a concerted anti-like addition, so the reaction fails. For the rest of this lesson, we'll be focusing on the most important cycloaddition, the Diels-Alder reaction. The Diels-Alder reaction is a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition between a conjugated diene and a dienophile, which is usually an alkene, but can also be an alkyne or some other pair of pi-bonded atoms. Shown here is the simplest Diels-Alder reaction between 1,3-butadiene and ethene. The reaction is performed under thermal conditions and produces a cyclohexene. In reality, this simple example doesn't really work very well. The Diels-Alder reaction normally occurs between the homo of the diene and the lumo of the dienophile. A good Diels-Alder reaction will typically have an electron withdrawing group attached to the dienophile. This lowers the energy of the dienophile's lumo, bringing it closer to the energy of the diene homo, which leads to better orbital overlap. Common electron withdrawing groups include nitriles, nitro groups, and carbonyls. Shown here is a more typical example of a Diels-Alder reaction that includes an electron withdrawing group on the dienophile. The reaction produces a substituted cyclohexene. In order for a Diels-Alder reaction to succeed, the two ends of the diene must be oriented in the same direction. In most dienes, simple free rotation along the single bond between the two alkenes allows for the interchange between two distinct planar conformations. In the figure, we see the S-cis, or cisoid, conformation, and the S-trans, or transoid, conformation. These terms are derived from the words cis and trans used to describe alkene stereoisomers. The Diels-Alder reaction requires the diene to be in an S-cis, or cisoid, conformation for its homo to overlap correctly with the dienophile lumo. Normally, this isn't an issue, but some conjugated dienes can actually be locked in an S-cis, or S-trans, conformation. Here, we see a diene that will always be in the S-cis conformation. The limited free rotation of the ring keeps the two ends of the diene together and enables a very fast Diels-Alder reaction. In contrast, this diene is locked in an S-trans conformation and can never be in an S-cis conformation. The limited free rotation of the ring keeps the two ends of the diene apart, preventing any Diels-Alder reaction. In a previous lesson, we learned that paracyclic reactions are stereospecific. In a Diels-Alder reaction, any stereochemistry in the diene or dienophile will influence the spatial arrangements of the substituents in the final product. Let's first look at how the dienophile impacts the stereochemistry of the reaction. The dienophile in a Diels-Alder reaction is usually an alkene, and the stereochemical relationship of any substituents directly attached to the double bond are simply transferred to the product. In the first reaction, we see 1,3-butadiene reacting with a cis disubstituted alkene. The product is a disubstituted cyclohexene, and the cis stereochemical relationship between the two substituents is maintained to give a cis disubstituted ring. In the second reaction, we see 1,3-butadiene reacting with a trans disubstituted alkene. The trans stereochemical relationship between the two substituents is maintained in the product, which is now a trans disubstituted ring. It's really just that simple. Now let's take a look at how the diene impacts the stereochemistry of the reaction. In these examples, the dienophile will be an alkyne, which will limit the source of stereochemistry to the diene. In the first reaction, we see cis-trans 2,4-hexadiene react with an alkyne to give a substituted cyclohexadiene. With the diene in the S-cis conformation, one methyl group is pointing in toward the center of the molecule, and the other is pointing out and away from the center of the molecule. With respect to in and out, the two groups are pointing in opposite directions, one in and one out. This opposite spatial arrangement is maintained in the product, where the two methyl groups have a trans stereochemical relationship, pointing in opposite directions. In the second reaction, we see trans trans 24 hexadiene react with an alkyne to give a substituted cyclohexadiene. With the diene in the S cis conformation, the two methyl substituents are both pointing out and away from the center of the molecule. 
With respect to in and out, the two groups are both pointing in the same direction, both out. This same spatial arrangement is maintained in the product, where the two methyl groups have a cis-stereochemical relationship pointing in the same direction, 